Oh. What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of Good Morning Tottenham. And we've got some headlines to go through. We'll take a look at the game last night as well. Uh, but the first headline we're going to be looking at today is about Dusan Vlahovic. Um, obviously, Mike McGrath from The Telegraph was talking a bit about him last night, saying he is a priority for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, was it interesting that he's saying that He's a priority for Tottenham to partner Kane. And with the price that they're going to be looking at him at 50 million, it sounds a bit too fishy to me. Yeah, he says it could, could exceed about 40 million pounds, the deal. So very, very expensive. He's only 21 years of age. So you're thinking, if, if, if you're thinking he could be a replacement for Kane, it's a bit, you, it's a bit of, um, despite his clear talent, had a massive breakout season last season from Fiorentina, scored 21 goals in Serie A. Um, big, strong um, striker. But you don't want to have a, be relying on him, I think, just yet. He's only had one great season for yeah. Fiorentina. He's definitely a player I'd want. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a player I would be very interested in getting. And if he was to be partnering Harry Kane, I think he's a he's a player that not only is he big and strong and he's good in the air, but he's actually not a, not, not a slouch either. He's actually got a decent turn of pace and he's got quite good, decent mobility for um, a tall striker. And obviously he's got a deadly finish, really good composure. So um, I'd definitely be interested in signing him, but I wouldn't want him to be our main replacement for Kane. I think that's a bit too much pressure on the sh shoulders of a young player, yeah. really. Um, it's interesting because they're saying that um, that they want him to partner Kane. They're saying that... Oh. that um, that he thinks Nuno is planning to play with two up top next season. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds a bit too fishy to me. I don't think we're going to be signing a striker for 40, 50 million. Uh, and I don't think we're going to be playing with two up top next year. So I think it's... Um, I do kind could of... Could be him and Son. Yeah, could be. I, I do feel that this a 40, 50 million pound striker will be uh, to eventually replace Kane, whether it be this year or next year. But I can't see Vlahovic try coming in to play second fiddle, to be honest, with the season he's just had. Um, yeah, but I think... Uh, yeah, I mean, he want to go into a new club now knowing that he's number two. Unless we're, unless we're had. playing two up top. I yeah. mean, why not? Why Do you think we we're going to be playing two up top? I mean, judging by pre-season, though, but um, there's no reason why we can't develop a system where we can play two up top. He did it many times at Wolves. It did require us playing um, Wolves playing three at the back, mm -hmm. but he did it many times. He played Jota and Jimenez up front together yeah. uh, many times. So clearly he knows how to get a system to play that way. And I think getting a partner in with Harry Kane uh, would definitely be helpful because as much as I enjoy... Uh, him playing up front on his own and he could hold the ball up and he can get one from wide positions. If he had a partner with him, then what, once he gets the ball, he'll have a partner, he'll have a runner right next to him who he can um, play through and he'll have the wingers as well. So I think it could work very, very well if Kane, if Kane has a partner up front with him. And I'll definitely be very excited if we sign Vlahovic and his ability to link up with Kane would be exciting. Um, but I, having said that, yeah, 50 million, that does scream to me like we're, we're planning for life without Kane if we spend that amount of money on a striker. Yeah. I'm thinking if we spend a bit, of, if, we, if, we, if we're signing a backup striker or a, or, um, a striker who's not going to be first choice um, to support Kane, you'd think you're not going to spend more than 20, 30 million on him. So if we're spending that amount of money, it's big money. Um, so it does tell does tell me that I, I'm not so sure. Either I'm not so sure this one is is viable for us, or is it actually planning for life without Kane? Because if you think Vlahovic and Son up front as well, that wouldn't be a bad partnership. It wouldn't like a target man with a player running off him would be yeah. quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad partnership at all. And there's also Vlahovic is a striker who can play on his own. He's proven that with mm -hmm. uh, Fiorentina. So. It would, be, it would definitely be a, um, a signing to excite me. And I can understand why he's the number one aim uh, for Tottenham because he's young as well, 21 years of age. Yeah. So that's really, really um, good age to get him in. So, I mean, we'll have to see how this one progresses. Mike McGrath is usually very reliable. So if he says that we're very interested in him, apparently he said as well in his article that um, Danny Ings was our number one target. And then once since Paratici come has come in, we've widened our scope for targets. Seems as though that's just, just the case in every position where uh, before Fabio Paratici came in, Joe Anderson was our first choice centre-back pretty mm -hmm. much. That's what it seemed like. And he's come to Crystal Palace and we've set ourselves our sights a bit higher. So um, in terms of a Danny Ings, would you prefer a Danny Ings for like 20 million? Um, or would you prefer a Vlahovic for like 50 million? Vlahovic. Yeah, I would agree that. But again, 
if we do sign Vlahovic, it says to me that we are looking to sell Kane this summer. Yeah, but if I know that, but I'm just saying, you know, if who, who would I rather buy right now would be Vlahovic, just because he's uh, younger, bigger scope to um, bigger scope to improve. And uh, Danny Ings, you know, if we sign him, um, he's he's 28, maybe 29 now. Obviously, he's Premier League proven, so you can come and make an instant impact. But injury records, as yeah, well. his injury record is is not great. And with Vlahovic, you could easily get that much, like a, l- a lot of that money back anyway. Even if he has a one poor season, you could easily get most of that money back after a season. With Ings, if he has a poor season, that's it. All that money's pretty much gone. The whatever you spend on him, you're not going to get much, you're not going to get any of that back. So, I think Vlahovic 100% would be a uh, someone. I think look, Vlahovic is the future of these kind of players. The young younger players coming through when uh, they're performing really really well so I think that these are the players we've got to aim for to regenerate the squad yeah and it's also worth noting actually like about five days ago I think it was now uh, Fabrizio Romano came out with that uh, Fabio Paratici absolutely loves uh, Vlahovic mm-hmm. um, so look it is one that I'd be excited about if it does come through the door but I'm just a bit skeptical skeptical if we are going to spend 40 50 million on him yeah I of really course am. of course I'm also going to be like that but um, I just you just got hope you just hope you got to, at the moment take them on their word days to play with Kane, but we've heard it all before. That's the worrying thing. And uh, with Spurs, a lot of time with Levy, you know, leopards don't change their spots when it comes to Levy. <laughs> we know that for sure. Uh, but Mike McGrath also went on to talk about Jaffet Tanganga, and he said Galatasaray has asked to sign Jaffet Tanganga on loan. Um, Tottenham Hotspur will assess the offer. Uh, to determine whether he'll be given regular game time. Do you think that's a, like a, a viable option? Do you think that that's something that we'll consider? Yeah. You do? I do. Galatasaray? Yeah, I think we all can. We, I think it is definitely something we would consider um, because I think he get, and even though it's um, a Turkish league, it definitely gives him game time and, and, and definitely gives him ability to um, grow up as a player and take more responsibility because let's be honest next season as much as I love Jaffet he's not going to be a first choice I just don't think so I don't think he's going to be um, first cho- like he's going to it's going to be very difficult for him especially if we get the centre back options that we want it's going to be difficult for him to get first first team minutes so I think you know you got to look at the Chelsea model a lot sometimes when how they loan out players to to, to foreign leagues like that they're young the youngsters and then they come they've come back um, having a lot more experience having Having played well and and had that responsibility at, um, at bigger clubs in foreign leagues, and then they either use them or they sell them on for a decent fee. And we've got to think, start thinking about that where with players like Jaffet, who I don't think are going to be that involved, in my opinion. But the, is there not a case for him in saying that obviously if we get one or two injuries at centre back, he'll be there? Uh, Europa Conference League uh, will probably want him to to go out and play in those games, the kind of early round of the cup games. Would you not want Tanganga there um, to kind of fill those spots? Um, yeah, I mean obviously he he could he could fill those spots, but I think you could if he has an option to go on loan to a decent club like Galatasaray. Um, I think for his development, that'll be the better. That'll be the better thing for him uh, overall than getting a few minutes here and there in Europa Conference League. And even if we get injuries, you know, if we're signing a centre back in Romero, um, and he's already good by, if we even if we don't get rid of Sanchez or die, he's going to be behind them, and he's going to be behind Roden. So it's very tough, I think, for him. And even a right back, it looks like we're going to sign a right back as well. I don't think, for me, I don't see him as a natural right back anyway. So I think Jaffet, if if he if he gets time to develop in a foreign league like Galatasaray where he'll really toughen him up I think if he starts there regularly I think that'll be better for him Would you prefer him to go on loan at Galatasaray or look at like a top championship club or like a lower end Premier League club Obviously Premier League yeah of course um, even Championship, I think, would, I think that's probably better for him. But I do think Galatasaray is also a good move. I think the Turkish league is underrated. Um, I don't think it's a great league, but I just think it's not like as bad as people. It's not like you know uh, a Middle Eastern league or something like that, or like America. Like it's not. It's got some decent teams. So I think, um, and and also he'll have the that re- that responsibility where. Um, where he'll he'll be playing in front of packed, very passionate crowds uh, week in, week out. And he'll have to be able to deal with that. And I think that would be a good learning curve for him. So I think, for me, if Jaffa does go on loan to Galatasaray, I think that's a good move for him. Interesting. Um, Do you not think so? uh, I think that... 
look, I, I get what you're saying. I think it will toughen him up, but I would just prefer to see him go to uh, somewhere with a bit of a higher quality league week in, week out. Um, I think I think maybe the championship, I, I know it might not be higher quality than the Turkish Premier League uh, week in, week out, but at least he's getting that English football um, kind of week in, week out. Like Oli Skip did last year, you know mm. what I mean? He did so well for him. It, yeah. it, it seems as though it's like grown Oli Skip as a man. He's come back a lot confident. Um, so I think there is something to be said staying in the English leagues. Um, if he if he doesn't stay in the English league, I would like to see him maybe go to Serie A, uh, somewhere like that, or maybe even the Bundesliga. I, I probably don't wouldn't want to see him go to Galatasaray. To be fair, to play in the Turkish league, it's, it doesn't seem like a right fit for me. I think maybe my first choice would obviously be the Premier League, mm -hmm. then probably the then probably Serie A or the Bundesliga and then the Championship and then probably the Turkish League Well, obviously, that. if these clubs come in for him, I'd much rather go there. I'm just saying right now Galatasaray is on the table and if that's the only yeah. one, then, um, I think it's a good move. I think that he's shown enough quality um, that teams in and around the lower end of the champion uh, Premier League, top end of the Championship, will take a look at him. Do you not Maybe. think so? I think he's done all right, but I think we have rose tinted glasses because he's a Spurs youngster who's come through the academy. He's, I don't... he's done more at Tottenham than Skip did before he got that Norwich loan. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think Skip had a few nice cameos when he played. I remember he started a Premier League game against, I think it was Burnley, and had a yeah, pretty accomplished Burnley, game. Yeah. He, um, didn't he go off at half-time that game? Um, no, that was his second game against Burnley. Oh, he played, he, so he started twice against Burnley. That um, the season was the season after. I don't think necessarily uh, Tanganga's done much more. He's I know had more I, opportunities, hasn't I, he? He has had more opportunities, and he did get man of the match on his debut against Liverpool. But I'm not look, I'm not shitting on Tanganga. I don't think he's a bad player. I don't, I think he has done well when given the opportunities he has. But I, I just think us Spurs fans, when we see a young player, I think we tend to like. Um, anything positive we can cling on to that we think uh, give to give us hope that he's going to be a player like to be starting in the Premier League I think we cling on to it and I don't think Tanganga has shown to me just yet that he's ready he's ready for Premier League football and he's ready to be playing week in week out and I think he needs um, a loan spell even if it is Galatasaray just to be playing that uh, um, first team football regularly um, in a league where he has a lot of responsibility in his shoulders uh, and, and I think that's how I feel I don't think right now Tanganga has shown um is gonna is is i think he could get a championship club i don't think they're like desperate to get him right now i, I don't feel like that right now mm -hmm. i just feel like he's done a decent job for as a youngster as someone's coming through but i don't see him as someone who has um completely shone look no he hasn't completely shone and also it's a bit it's been a bit difficult for him because he has been sometimes shifted out to the left back mm -hmm. shifted out to right back for the majority of time and like you said before we both think i think we're both in agreement here that I, we both think he's a natural centre back, yeah. um, and I think that if he went on loan to the, like a top, end, like a equivalent of a Norwich loan, like Skippy did, I do think if he starts week in week out, and let's say gets promoted to the Premier League, I think it will do wonders for his confidence, absolute wonders, and I think we could actually see a different player coming back to Tottenham. I think you're right in that fact. Yeah, of course, if he gets a move like that, then it would be brilliant. But it's they're tough to come by at the moment. These teams, I don't know if they want to just take a loan deal they probably want with an option to buy or something you know these Premier League teams yeah not, uh, even even top end championship side I was saying yeah they're not, they're not uh, yeah top end championship sides maybe might be more interested but lower end Premier League seed sides they're not interested in developing other teams players anymore yeah interesting uh, the next one we're going to go to is uh, still from Mike McGrath and he's talking about MK Dons won Troy Parrott on loan from Tottenham Hotspur this summer um, did Troy play, play last night? Did he come on? He did. He How came was he? on. He came on for about uh, uh, twenty minutes or so, fifteen twenty minutes. Didn't make like, much of an impact, to be honest. Um, Dane Scarlett was on for a short amount of time and did more on the pitch than uh, Troy Parrott did. Um, uh, I think again, MK Dons would be a good move for him. Well, they championship side, aren't the championship or League no, One? League One. I league think One. They are. Um, so either way. I think um, another move is definitely in the offing for Troy Parrott because he had two um, he had two uh, moves uh, last season uh, to Millwall and Ipswich, both of them um, not doing great. So I think at the moment he needs to get find a home and find a place where he can build his confidence and um, build up his uh, playing style, and you know toughen up a bit. That's how I, that's how I feel about Troy. He just hasn't quite 
done it on his loan moves just yet. So he needs another one. And MK Dons would be a good one. Because from, judging from yesterday, they actually played quite decent football. So maybe that could work in his favour. In terms of Troy Parra, um, the best I've actually seen him was in that um, cameo that he came on against Colchester. I thought he looked quite impressive in that game. And that's probably uh, the most excited I've seen him or the most excited I've been uh, seeing him. Um, it's a bit unfortunate for you saying, because obviously I didn't watch the game last night, mm. but it's unfortunate saying last night I thought he would have uh, produced more um, against an MK Dons. But yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on. He needs a loan in League One. He needs to start week in, week out um, and see where we go. But I don't know if he's um, an out-and-out -out striker that we thought he would be. I think he might be playing more off the right-hand side or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they, that's that's how they play on the left-hand side and in, and in behind the striker. That's where he's been playing for Millwall and um, Ipswich. So maybe it's a case of because he's so young, you know, 18, 19 years of age, he doesn't quite have the characteristics yet to be playing up front on his own in a against um, defenders like in the championship who are not going to take any prisoners you know what I mean they're going to go in hard and they're going to um, and then they're going to show no mercy when going to the challenge and it's tough for a teenager to deal with that you know when you're not tough enough yet or you haven't um, grown into yourself so maybe that's why um, they've put him on the wing for the time being and he might be, he might be more comfortable there against fullbacks and stuff or who he can maybe get a bit more space against he doesn't have to battle physically against them so that's probably why at the moment he's being played there but you know um when uh when he was playing in the youth level and he was playing um for spurs you know in a few cameos he was always playing up front so i think mm -hmm. that's how he sees himself and that's how spurs see him i just think maybe the championship at the moment is tough for him to be playing especially if he's up front on his own it's very tough for a teenager to do that role i think does it prove um how good dane scarlett actually is how how he's outshining troy parrot because after everything that you just said you know um, uh, Dane Scarlett can go up front, lead the line, and look absolutely at home there at 17. Yeah, but to be fair, Parrot and Friendlies did as well. Are you, um, I don't uh, think to that extent, the, the extent that Dane Scarlett can. Maybe not to that extent, but I remember the old games in in friendlies. I remember against Juventus, he played very well, and like he and um, and I remember he looked at home. I was thinking, oh, this guy looks really, really good. So I think friendlies are very hard to judge. What I'd say about Scarlett is he hasn't just done it in friendlies. He's looked decent um, in cameos in Europa League as well, and 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 um, and cup games. So I guess there's a point there. Um, but it's a, you know if you put Scarlett up front in the championship up front on his own is he going to have a similar problem to Troy? I mean you know it's it's very difficult to know the because because it's it's just different it's a different uh, game when you're playing in a proper competitive game against center, big strong centre backs in the championship it's just a completely different game than playing in friendly so as much as Scarlett is impressing and I'm loving what I'm seeing with Scarlett it doesn't mean to say, say he's ready just uh, just yet as well he could experience very similar problems to Para if he were to move to on loan um, to a to a lower league side let's talk about um, Oli Skip mm. I'm hearing some glowing reports again from him yesterday. Um, how did you assess his performance? Actually, yesterday, to be honest, it was more disappointing than the one than against Colchester. Um, he was a bit off the pace, I felt. Really? Uh, he was. He I'm was. hearing some glowing reports from, from yesterday. He, he did some really good things. And I think those really good things in the game like are packaged in a good highlights reel. And that you know that pass you saw to Pascozzi late in the game was pinpoint brilliant. Yeah, that was great. Um, there were some really good moments as well where a couple of times he pinched the ball in, in the attacking third and was able to set up attacks. That was very positive. However, actually, when he was in the centre of midfield and, and MK Dons had the ball, there was a few times um, he got caught out quite badly and and in possession as well he got caught out which uh people don't want, want to admit but i just think maybe um it's uh, i think it is still him getting his fitness back and everything i don't look i'm not saying he was bad i'm just saying he was actually a bit off the pace compared to his colchester game he didn't seem quite on point however i did think he did a lot of good things as well and is still very very promising um uh, performance in terms of him developing into a first team player that we want to see for this season so i'm, I'm very still very excited about wink um skip but I think that um, yesterday just wasn't his best, unfortunately. But that's, that is what it is. I, I still think he played fairly well, but he was a bit off the pace at some moments. Obviously, he's um, just coming back to full fitness. Yeah. He's just getting his... Uh, obviously, he had a bad injury at the back end of last season. Um, he only managed to do 45 minutes against Colchester. I believe he played for longer uh, yesterday, last night. Yeah, he played a lot longer, yeah. He played so, up I mean, 75 that, that minutes. also uh, yeah. have something to do with it. So I think that... 
It's just, I think it's important not to read what too much into these performances in preseason because it is I'm not, mainly yeah. a, um, <clears throat> a fitness regime, isn't it? That's the thing, because I, I as that I agree with that, and I think it was at the end of the day it was a good outing for Skip, um, despite the fact a few times he got caught out and he he was driving the ball and didn't know what to do with it a couple of times, but. I think main the main thing is he he keeps get, getting um, longer on the time on the pitch, and I think he showed in 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 a, a show during the game his quality anyway, um, despite the fact that a few times it wasn't as good. I think um, uh, there's a few times as well where he was brilliant. So um, I still I'm still very excited about Harry. Um, Oli, Oli Harry Skip. Kane, oh, <laughs> Harry Skip, Harry Skip, Oli <laughs> Skip. So I'm very excited about what you what you could potentially bring to us this season, and he seems to have these his passing range on point. He seems to have this ability to just effortlessly play these crossfield passes, um, pinpoint, which is something to be very excited about. Interesting. And a few more um, performances I want to speak about from last night: Deli Ali. Lucas Mora and Steven Bergvine. Mm. They um, linked up very well yesterday. So I, I only and Son as well. I only managed to watch. Yeah, and Son. I only managed to watch the um, the highlights last night. It yeah. was eight minutes highlights that Tottenham put out. Um, but from what I saw, that we were playing some really lovely one touch passing, breaking the lines, um, some quick one touch passing, really penetrating, uh, the, uh, albeit MK Don's defence, and um, it looked like a really strong performance from those three, those four. Yeah, first of all, when I, when I talk about Bergvine, I definitely haven't seen him as sharp as that in a long time, a very long time. He looked trim, he looked fresh, he was able to uh, beat players at will, he was um, also had a bit of quality, his shooting boots weren't quite on, but a few times he was able to find crosses into the box and find Son um, at the back post and have really good pinpoint crosses. Um, so I thought that was really impressive from Bergvine. Um, his ability on the breakaway to link up with Lucas and Delhi was very, very strong. Um, and I thought he was um, he was great. Lucas Mora has found this kind of new element to his game where he's playing these really quick, um, accurate through balls, which are setting up attacks very quickly. He, what I see about Lucas is he, when he beats a player now, he, he seems to be a bit more decisive in his actions. He doesn't seem to be dawdling on the ball too much. Um, a few times yesterday, he <coughs> was just beat a player and through ball quickly, very quickly, as soon as he got the ball, which is very different to what we've seen from Lucas Mora um, previously, where he gets where he beats a player and then he stops and assesses his options he doesn't know what he's doing and he then he ends up losing it, yeah. he ends up losing the ball or yeah. gets a cross blocked or something so that was really encouraging by Lucas Mora maybe that's something he's been um, working on because that 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 seems to be a feature of his pre-season working on time and time again but hopefully he can bring that into the Premier League and then Delhi was um, not only in the final third, which I thought he was really sharp and he was pressing really well and he won the ball inside the box a couple of times yeah, as well. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, And... He had his creativity, his passing was brilliant. He was working really hard for the team. He was dropping back into a midfield three whenever we um, didn't have the ball. Um, he went when he was linking up really well with Lucas Bergvan and so on, playing these delightful through balls and setting up attacks. So he was a really encouraging performance for them for um, up front linking together. Um, and just hope we can bring that into the Premier League. Obviously, it's friendly, so it's too hard to judge. But um, I, I was very encouraged from what I saw yesterday and how they linked. And someone was just a winning run. We know, we know what Son can give, um, even in that striker position. He was a threat all day long. And um, I thought the pace and the sharpness of that front four was uh, very, very encouraging. So, um, what was it called? Give Delhi the captaincy, as Grandpa give says the last captaincy. night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He did. He, did. he was captain last night. And yeah. I, he seemed to... I can understand what he's saying. I don't think we should give him the captaincy, obviously. But I can understand what Grandpa was saying in terms of he took that extra responsibility with him and maybe that's something that can drive him on and maybe that's something that um, he needs to move forward. He needs that responsibility on his shoulders up as, as opposed to maybe just drifting in and out um, of um, games now and, and not having that responsibility. So I understand what he's saying there, but um, I think I don't want to be giving him the captaincy just yet. That's a bit of a big bit stretch. <laughs> but he was brilliant yesterday. I did think Daddy was... Was brilliant and in, in terms of the uh, the kids that played yesterday mm. obviously a big standout performance was Alfie Whiteman 
Um, yeah. Channeling his inner Hugo Lloris at the beginning with that penalty. Uh, yeah. But he did save the penalty, made up for it. Um, I thought he'd been saving the penalty, was channeling his inner Lloris. Well, both of them, actually. <laughs> you got to say that. Both of them were channeling his inner Lloris. But the way he gave away that penalty did have shades of yeah, Hugo. Yeah, he rushed out, didn't he? Br- rush of blood to the head. Um, and, you know, I saw some really good saves in there from Alfie Whiteman in the highlights. Um, how did you assess his performance? Um, I thought he played really well. He made some really good saves throughout the game. Um, probably showed more in that game than Joe Hart showed in the whole year last year. Yeah, probably. Um, corners, he wasn't as strong. But um, I thought yesterday, um, he obviously the penalty save was brilliant. He made a really good save from a free kick as well um, in the first half, which was uh, going into the corner. Um, and he um, he was he looked commanding, and it was he was it was it was encouraging from Whiteman yesterday. And I want to see him maybe get a loan move. Or, or obviously he's going to be third choice, but I want to see him get some more regular game time so we can see what he's really about. Because yesterday was a very good performance, so I was happy with uh, what I saw from Alfie Whiteman yesterday. But it's you know it's very difficult to tell, really, isn't it? Um, about uh, a quality of a keeper and it just based off one friendly performance. Yeah, of course. And um, any other performances from any of our youth players? I know Nile John started. Uh, yeah, Nile John was all right. Um, I don't think he was as good as he had been in other games. Um, he wasn't able to get into those attacking positions and get shots off that he was able to against Colchester and uh, Leighton Orient. Um, so he's a bit more anonymous, but he was okay. Um, who else was there? There was um, I actually one player. He's not a youngster, but Regulon I thought was brilliant. Was he? Regulon I thought played really well. He was getting in these very attacking positions and getting in really strong positions inside the box and should have scored um, maybe one or two goals as well. So I thought he played really well. Dr. Do- Rasmussen here in the comments says he thinks Regulon looked a little nervous in front of goal yesterday. Um, he he did a bit. He did look. A, I wouldn't say nervous. A bit, um, but I would say a bit uh, apprehensive. Maybe is the right word. He just didn't seem like, like a fully a fully um, confident regular. Maybe takes a few of his shots first time and fires into the corner. But he was taking those extra touches, allowing goalkeepers to get into position and stuff like that. So um, I can understand what he's saying. He maybe could have been a bit more ruthless. But I thought he was in those attacking positions time after time, and he was giving. But he was linking up really well with Bergvine actually uh, throughout the game. So that was really really encouraging as well um, from regular. And Doherty didn't see much of yesterday, to be honest. Didn't see much of him. Um, he wasn't really getting the positions Regulon was getting in. I feel like he was hanging back a bit more. He's playing a bit more defensive role than uh, Regulon was. Um, and we didn't see, didn't see too much of him from an attacking perspective, unfortunately, um, for uh, Matt Doherty. I uh, thought Tanganga um, and Carter Vickers did, uh, did a decent job at the back. I thought Tanganga actually did pretty well yesterday, to be fair. Um, the rest of the youngsters didn't get enough time, I think. That we didn't really make subs until like the sem- the about the seventieth minute. To build or so up that fitness. Sixty fifth minute. So um, the uh, the other youngsters didn't see much. of Scarlet did all right actually. To be fair, when he came on, had a few good touches and runs. Um, but other than that, it was uh, it's tough to really rate uh, how the other youngsters did. All right, well, let's uh, go to this last one from Alberto Florenzi uh, from Marca uh, just before we start taking some calls. And he says, Tottenham are negotiating for Christian Romero. He is their main target, but Atalanta remain firm and request his release clause of £47 million. In that tug of war, the Spurs' second option is Kurt Zuma, which could be done for £25 million. I mean, isn't Zuma going to severe? So I don't understand it. Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen much of that since yesterday, uh, or maybe two days ago now. Is that it then? It's a dead I deal. Is it? No, I'm knows, joking. No, I, I'm pretty sure it's still going on. If he's included in the Kunde deal, I, d- I don't think that's going to break down. So that seems like, it. unless Chelsea stump up just straight cash, well, that's a possibility, I guess. But um, I d- I'm not that interested in having Zuma um, Chelsea cast offs, to be honest. I'm not that interested in that. I think if if we're aiming to be challenging with teams like Chelsea, then I think um, we need to be aiming. Yeah, offs. exactly. If he's not good enough for Chelsea, why is he good enough for us? I don't think he. I yeah. don't think he it's is. It's a move so. that stinks of Arsenal. He uh, is you know completely, I mean? completely so, Arsenal move. I, I don't want Zuma. Uh, but again, I said that I didn't want Rudiger at the start of last season, and he's uh, completely proved me wrong. That's that's fair. That's fair. Rudiger's done a great job. Um, but the thing is, with Rudiger. 
Different Zuma, I guess, well, Zuma also had a big injury, but that was not of many years ago now. Um, Rudiger was off the back last season of a very bad injury, and maybe it was taking a while to get back into the f- f- full fitness. Because we, we, when, when he signed him, we knew he was a good defender. Yeah. Not, 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 not saying he was ever been bad. He just had a really bad injury, ruled him out for a long time. And then he came back. It took him a long time to kind of bed in um, again. But I think Zuma's a bit different. I just feel like he's been, a, he's been injury-free for a, for a few years and hasn't quite done it for me. Uh, Zuma. I don't think he's bad. Uh, um, again, I don't think he's a bad player. I just don't think he's of the required standard. I don't think he's that much better than Sanchez, basically, or Do- or Dyer. Like, I don't think Sanchez and Dyer are terrible players. I really don't. I just don't think they're good enough for what we need, and, and they're always going to hold us back. That's that's the reality. And I think Zuma might come in and have, have some good performances for us, but he always, um, when you really need him, holds you back. I feel. Um, and I, that's why if we go, don't go for if we can't get Romero for whatever reason, which we know the reason, um, uh, if we can't get him, I would rather go for someone else than Zuma, someone who's a bit more up and coming and has more potential scope to be a, with a higher potential than Zuma. Are you starting to lose a bit of faith with this Romero deal? No, not yet. I still think it's going to happen. I'm st- I, f- I still think it's just bartering at the moment. I think that a um, bit of toing and froing, I think we'll get the deal done. How long does it moment. take to barter? Like, Sleevy, you what's know, wrong? It's, it's, just there's get it no done limit. in a day. Like, what's, like, it's so easily to get done. Well, Tuto Sport are saying Atlanta now want between 60 and 65 million for Romero. <laughs> the price seems to be going up and up so every day. How is it going up? How it can't be going up, but um, that, that doesn't seem right. But um, I still think... May I think these Barca links are just talk to maybe uh, dry, yeah. get a few million out of Spurs and rush us along. I think they're talking about a loan deal now. To yeah, Barcelona. I don't think it's I don't think it's actually real. I just think it's uh, they're putting <coughs> sorry. I just think they're putting things out there to uh, kind of speed Spurs up a bit. I feel that's how they, I think t- they do that. I mean, you see, I've seen that a few times. Mm. I've, they do that to scare the other team into just quickly. All right, they're going to be in less game over the line quickly. Um, so I, th- I think that's the probably the the what's happening at the moment with that deal. But if Christian Romero sees uh, these Barcelona links and sees this, you know, maybe he thinks that <coughs> oh, maybe I can go to a better club than Tottenham. Yeah, but it's not real. I know it's not real, but maybe he's think maybe he thinks it's real. You know, you never know what's real and what's not real with uh, yeah, stuff but if it's that not, comes but he'll know. But he'll know. Romero will know if it's real or not. And I was it's thinking as well, like if Romero is that good, why is why is he not of the same stance of Jules Kunde that he only wants Champions League football? I don't know. It's interesting though. Um, maybe he's just ready for to try out a new league, and he likes the thought of Tottenham. Uh, players have different. I don't know. Maybe he's willing to sit a year out of uh, Champions League with the hope that we can get back in it, and he has fully his full belief in himself that he can do that. Whereas uh, Kunde um, right now is maybe a bit a bit more ambitious. I don't know. It's it's, it's difficult to say mm. why why that is. But I wouldn't say it, it's um, because of quality. I, d- I don't think that's the case. Might be wrong. Um, all right, let's move on. There's a date for your diary, and next week, second of August, we'll find out who we play in the first, well, in the only qualifier for the Europa Conference League. Um, we'll be playing who God, God knows what kind of team we're going to be playing but that's when the draw is the 2nd of August at 1pm the games will be played on the 19th and the 26th of August um, and after that Christian Eriksen will be returning next week to Inter Milan uh, for tests to see if he can continue playing his career um, so obviously we wish Christian Eriksen all the best mm. and all good luck and everything all good vibes anything that we can send to him we're sending all positivity in Christian Eriksen's direction really hope he can get his career uh, kick-started again don't we of course, of course, and um, it must be very. It's been must be the hardest month of his life, probably. What's happened uh, over the last month for him? So um, I'm I'm praying and I'm wishing he can get back on the pitch and he can still have a career. It's going to be very difficult to manage that and to uh, um, to see how how that's going to play out. But we're obviously hoping and praying he it can happen because you know he's a he's a marvelous player to watch. He's he's a, he's a brilliant player um, on on his day. So. Um, I'm just wishing he can still uh, get back on the pitch because that uh, the foot the, the you know the foot uh, football matches are better with him in them than without them. Most I think de- most so definitely true. He's a magician when exactly. he's exactly. So on I really really want him to uh, get back as soon as possible. 
Uh, there's just been another update on Christian Romero in the last five seconds from Sky Italy. Oh. Um, and they're saying that there is a big gap between Atalanta and Spurs on reaching agreement on the fee for Christian Romero. Uh, the demands are judged as too much by Spurs and a deal is not even close. Uh, <laughs> I should be worried. That's I'm not worried. good news. That's not good news I'm at worried. All. We've been stung too many times um, in this kind of situation before. It's true. It's true. And, and it it's seems happened like many it's going times. that way. It seems like it's going the same way, unfortunately. And and it seems as though we don't want to push the boat out for him. Going to miss out on him again for the sake of a few million. Yep. I mean, it's I hope it's not true. That, that it's not a good update because it's Sky Italy, so that's reliable. So that's not good. That is not good news at all. No, we're going to have to wait and see how it plays out till the end. But we've seen, we've all seen this show before. We've all seen this show before. We all know how it ends. How many times are we going to see this? How many times we're we going to get overexcited by a player before he signs and then get let down by the man? We're never going to stop. That's never going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to stop. It's going to be an endless loop of overexcitement. <laughs> um, but that is that is that is awful uh, news from Sky Italy coming out of Sky Italy, and we know that. Um, uh, Romano, um, I know he used to work for Sky Italy. I don't think he does anymore, but I know he used to. So maybe you know they get tidbits from him or whatever, and they get they still have contacts um, that are reliable. Um, so when you hear that from uh, those publications, then you then you do start to get worried. To be honest, that this is going to uh, fall uh, fall down. Um, it's such a shame if we again we we miss out on a player because we can't stump up the feed that we need to to get a player of his quality that's the uh that's really gonna that's really uh disheartening again because we know that we then that mentality has to change and we know paratici feels like that mentality has to change so if it's still not changing then that's something to get concerned about going to going to the f- next season and it means going back to the drawing board for another center back and it means um going for a player that we that wasn't first choice which is frustrating, and it means going for a lesser quality player. If you're, we're convinced by Romero, and we believe in him totally. Just pay the money. Yeah. <coughs> uh, anyway, that's a bit of a depressing update. But let's start getting some um, some fans on. Let's see what they have to say about the matters at Tottenham right now. And let's start off with Ariane. No Ben Davis FC in his name today. Ariane, how you doing, mate? good my sleep schedule is incredibly hard. it is absolutely mudded right now it's 4 a.m <laughs> i've not been able to sleep well, good like morning a- <laughs> morning guys <laughs> um all right um well i was getting a little bit not excited but i was you know in a decent mood until you just told me that um, sorry about that Ah, no worries. <laughs> it's not your fault. We've got Daniel Levy at the top of the club. Uh, it's, you know, it's... What's your opinions on it all, Ariane? Do you think that somehow this is going to get over the line or is have we just seen this story before and we know where it's going? Diaz, Dybala, Skriniar, Bruno Fernandez. I can go on. Like, yeah. It's like you said, we've seen this show before. We've seen the exact same thing play out time and time again it's it's always the same story it's always out of nowhere there's a sudden interest in a really good player the negotiations advance lightning speed there's a sudden stop in news someone breaks that there's a small small gap but the player is interested and then all of a sudden there's no news constantly just recycled news and then boom falls apart every time every single time and then we have to sell for some random player and it seems as though we're just before, just before now, that moment where it just completely falls flat on its face. That's where it feels like we are right now. Um, you know, they're talk, they're talk, I know Zuma is in, it seems as though he is in talks with Sevilla, but there's also reports saying that we could be going for him as a backup option to Romero. I mean, how much of a kick in the teeth would that be? Like, wasn't Zuma like top scorer for like the first four games? Yeah, he was. He was. <laughs> you know, maybe he, he could replace Harry Kane up top for us. <laughs> maybe. <instead. laughs> maybe he'll get us to score a few it. more corners anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, uh, look, if we get Zuma, I'm, I mean, I can't say it's downgrade on Dyer and Sanchez. I can just say it's a downgrade on Romero. Uh, it's, yeah. You know, 25. It's like 
25 million for Zuma, it's like, he's not a bad player at all. He's probably an improvement on what we have realistically, but it's like, why pay 25 million for a small upgrade? You know what I'm saying? Why exactly. is it, if we're haggling over 10 million, why why just pay, like, I get it's less money, but why pay 25 million for something that's going to bring our center back partnership from like seventh or eighth in the league to like sixth? What's the point? Like, if yeah. you want to get Champions League, like, if you want to get the Champions League money, you're it's it's another extra 20 million and that's what Romero's ideally trying to get us get us to Champions League level it's like he's so Daniel Levy is so scared of adding that little extra investment into the transfer budget people are going to say oh how come when there's a good signing it's Don Paratici masterclass but when it's a like a problem it's somehow Levy's fault it's because Don Paratici is getting the money that's given to him which is clearly limited by Levy and he's getting us brilliant signings like Brian Hill but on the other hand, when he needs eight mil, because look, I, did any of us here think Paratici is going to be haggling over eight million if he doesn't have to? No, no, of he, course not. Of course not, right? So that's why we're blaming Levy. Um, it's it's ridiculous how he's so scared of a little bit of risk that he'd rather settle for a conference in Europa, or maybe he genuinely expects us to get Champions League with this center back pairing, which is even whatever that's even more um, scary isn't it that's even like that's a nightmare man like i I'm, i'm probably won't be able to go to sleep if that's the truth like, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous man i don't even know what to say yeah, yeah. and it just it's, it just smells again of just spurs not learning their lessons in the transfer mm-hmm. market for again we can't get this deal over the line i mean obviously it looks like there's negotiations still ongoing but to, at this point if, if when sky italy is saying the deal at the moment is is not close and the demands are just judged as uh, too high it's like why bri- why bother bringing in Paratici if you're not going to learn the lessons that we that we have yeah. that we've had for 20 years now of continually missing out on big targets who we are convinced are going to improve us massively and yet again we're going to fall into the same trap so what what you know we can talk about Don Paratici and all this all we like but it, 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 if, if we're not going to learn our lessons it's not going to make a difference absolutely not so i i don't get it it's it, it's almost like levy give gave him that title of general manager just so he can be like hey hey, hey don't look at me don't look at me I, mm-hmm. i'm not the guy anymore i'm not gonna look at this guy this guy's supposed to be handling transfers don't look at me anymore like at this point i'm, I'm getting a kind of a sense that this might be the whole thing it's not even levy trying to be like you know what maybe maybe it is my fault maybe i should get someone else it's almost as if he's just trying to deflect the responsibility entirely like mm. i don't understand it like unless like genuinely, we don't have the money. The only way I can see us not having the money is if we're going for Vlahovic and not selling Kane, right? Because if we're selling Kane, then this money should be out of the question. We should have enough money to splash it on a second Romero as well, mm-hmm. right? But if we're going for Vlahovic for some reason without selling Kane and not getting Romero, then I can understand the haggling. But I, I can't see that happening. Like, that's the only situation. It just doesn't make sense to me, right? So it, I, I don't know, man. It's just frustrating. It's like, why? What do you think of the perspective of Vlahovic deal? Do you think it's one, you know, they're saying it in the excess of 40 million. Do you think that's one Levy will be willing to push the bow out on? Or do you think that um, it would only happen if, because they're, they're saying rumors is to play with Kane. But do you think that is just paper talk and maybe he is going to be a replacement for Kane if we do sign him? Because it's a big amount of money, a big layout to sign for a second striker, especially from Tottenham's point of view. I can't see Daniel Levy buying, giving a 45 million signing to like that someone that isn't meant to be a star player or something. Like that is the unleaviest thing I've ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I I don't think that's the case. If we get him, then Kane's probably going. And if Kane's going, we should have enough money to get him, Romero, a second, like, starting center back as well. We should have that money. Whether or not Glebe's going to give it to us is a different question, but we should, right? Um, my biggest reservation with, um, like, the selling Kane and getting Vahovic thing isn't even the fact that we're trying to replace Kane. It's the fact that who are we selling him to, right? Mm-hmm. If we're selling him to a Man City thing, just kiss the league goodbye like it's gone this is a farmer it's farmers league now it's another one team league and that's frustrating but um well i think that's... it's city or i think it is city or bus to be fair i don't think there's any other options yeah i think yeah i think that is like the well i think that's the only reason we haven't sold them yet mm-hmm. like i think if genuinely like juventus coming with a 150 million offer i don't think levy even bats an eyelid 150 million you know there you go. Pleasure doing business with you. Now I have about 
25 million in gifted paratici so <laughs> <laughs> um so you know but i but, think when you're giving it to a city then it's a different story do you think vlahovic though would he be a, a good enough replacement for for harry kane if we were not good enough for not a good enough replacement for kane but would he be an acceptable alternative to harry kane if kane was to go and he was one of the strikers brought in for you I have not seen very much of him. What I do know about him is that he's about 21 years old and he has 140 minutes per goal in the Serie A, which is a very good league. Mm -hmm. So as far as on paper, he looks like a decent player. So I wouldn't object to the move, but I haven't seen very much of him. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know what type of player he is and how he would fit into our team. Mm. All right. Fair enough, Ariane. Good to speak to you as always, mate. Always a pleasure oh, having yeah. you on. And uh, maybe you should go get some sleep. Try and get some sleep. Hopefully the thought of Sanchez and Dyer won't give you nightmares with uh, the oh, radio man, maybe breaking I, down. That's but... why I haven't been able to sleep. <laughs> no, that you Don't want to that. close your eyes. How's he supposed to sleep oh, no. with the Christian Romero news coming yeah, out? So we're, oh, we're miles yeah. apart. <laughs> oh, poor Ariane. <laughs> Uh, all right, thank you, you so doing much. All right, though. All good right. see you, mate. Good one. night, Ariane, or good morning, Spurs. whatever <laughs> you want to call it. But yeah, come <laughs> on, you Spurs. <laughs> Uh, we've got a couple of super chats to get through. One from Bob Spur TV. Big up, Bob. And he says, guys, it's the same old poo. Only reason the striker links came out today was for us gullible fans' mindset shifting elsewhere. Rubbish. What you Maybe make out it's that? to cloud uh, the Romero deal breaking down. Wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Um, obviously, the Vlavic uh, news came out yesterday from Mike McGrath, who's, to be fair, also very reliable. So um, I'm not. I'm going to try and take him for his word. But I, I can understand what he's saying because um, it's awful, awful um, news if uh, if Romero, if the Romero deal, seem, as it seems, is breaking down. And I guess Tottenham are the kings of the PR, and not kings. Are you? They're they're. they're kings of the perceived pr they're putting out these good good stories to try and distract from other things they're always doing it all the time so would not be surprised if it is tried to distract uh, spurs fans yes yeah and shiraz khan with the super chat big up shiraz and says sometimes if we can if we're convinced the player is top quality we have to bite the bullet and pay mm -hmm. and that's a hundred percent spot on and that's exactly what uh, the Don Paratici said in those quotes, I don't know if it was when he was at Tottenham or when it was at Juve, but I think it's irrelevant. Um, and that's what Daniel Levy fails to um, to get, pretty much. Transfer window, year in, year out. And it seems like it's not even... It seems like with any player we sign, it's always like we have to get him for a bit cheaper. We have to. Otherwise, we're not signing him. If we, if we don't get him below the, mar the asking of the market price, then we're not getting him. When we, right, we refuse to pay of what's being asked. Whatever you ask for, we're not paying that. Yeah. So that's that's how I feel it is with Levy, uh, uh, always, and that's the most frustrating thing. It's so annoying. Um, Essa El Shamari with the super chat says that this is stupid. In five years' time, we are going to pay more than fifty-five million for replacements. So why not just pay it now? Exactly. Exactly. Just yeah. pay it now. We've got a defender there who's uh, going to be ready and going to be uh, able to marshal our defence for many, many years. So it's it's definitely an investment worth putting in. But at the moment, we see, oh, I don't know. I don't know what we see. We just see that, uh, spur, that, that it's too much because we're not willing to go past a certain price. And that's it. We're, we're putting a line in the sand. But it's just so frustrating because we're going to miss out on a player who we are convinced is going to improve us. And, and and for the sake of a few million, we're going to would rather go for a player who we're not convinced of and take a bit more of a risk. It's classic yeah. Tottenham. Harry, though, in the comments has tagged us and he says Sky Italy are only quoting Tuto Sport. Uh, so hopefully that's true. Um, I hope that's true. Is that what they're saying? That's what just someone in the comments says. But we've got another super chat here from Luke Diamond. Big up yourself, oh, Luke, up Diamond, Luke Diamond. And thank you so much for the super chat. And he says, I want Romero, but I understand the hesitation from the club to go that high for him. He's 23, had one solid season, and Juve are happy for him to go. Um, back to back top season, 50 to 60 million pounds for me. Well, he was pretty good at Genoa as well. So it wasn't just last season. I mean, I mean, last season he exploded. Obviously, he got Serie A Player of the Year. He was amazing. Um, but he was pretty good at Genoa as well before that. That's why he um, was able to move to Juventus and then obviously loaned out to uh, Atalanta. Although I know 
transfers in Italy are very complicated a lot of the time they yeah. do that these teams they sign players to immediately sell them on um, so it's not out of the ordinary but I would I wouldn't I, w- I think it's a bit unfair to say he's had one he has had one brilliant season but I don't think he's had just one good season um, I think it's a player that um, clearly Paratici knows well clearly yeah. is convinced of looking to sign him for the second time exactly so I think um, this is a player that um, everyone at the club is on the same page with except for the person paying the money at the moment and that's that's the issue we, we 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 clearly want him we believe in him but we're not willing to go that extra bit to make sure we get him we're not gonna we would rather risk not getting him than make sure we do get him if only atalanta wanted damas and sanchez and make everything so much easier yeah uh, shame <laughs> uh, i wish i wish but life is surely if support. sevilla accepted an offer of 30 million plus sanchez atalanta would but you clearly not clearly what can i say not because you'd pff, Actually, probably not. Probably Atalanta are probably playing at a higher level than Sevilla these days, aren't they? They're both in the Champions League. They are. But you would say if they came up against each other, I'd back Atalanta to win probably. Yeah, just because they're playing style. Um, actually, I'm not so sure. Um, I'm not so sure because I think Sevilla did got, got quite, a, quite, a, quite a lot better as the season went on last season. Mm. So and they flopped at the end though, didn't they? They did flop a bit, but they still finished fairly f- very good decent points to own position so I think it would be quite even uh, Atlanta versus Sevilla but I don't think Sanchez would be right for uh, Atlanta mm. in how they play um, um, another super chat here from Jerome at Cloridor big up yourself and he says Sky Italy is only quoting Tuto Sport and there are plenty of articles saying we got a boost as Atalanta are looking at new defender to replace Romero and that's also true Yeah, that's also true because it is evident um, that Atalanta are looking evidently looking for replacements they are Yeah, uh, they true. did sign a centre back um, earlier this week or the back end of last week um, and it has said uh, and from a few publications that and reliable sources as well that Atlanta are planning for life without Christian Romero yeah so I think uh, it could easily be these these reports just coming out again it's more reports to try and force Tottenham's hand it's possible but we on the one hand that's possible but on the other hand it's like we know Tottenham are are known for not paying up the money so it's hard to know where which what to believe at the moment because we've been down this road so many times before any sort of news even if it's from like the worst source in the world we're just like oh no footy footy insider (laughs) turns it on (laughs) (laughs) funny footy insider they know what they're talking about we've got another super chat here from YP Toretta big up yourself and he says how did we become? How did we manage to sign Son, Eriks, and Toby for such small fees a few years ago? Is the market going crazy? I think the market's actually calming down to what it was in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think Romero would have probably cost like seventy million um, Maybe, if yeah. this was a couple of years ago. So I do think it's calmed down a bit. I do think, probably, I think it calmed down quite a bit last last year, and then they are creeping up again. But um, I, the market, look. The market has, has gone crazy a long time ago. This isn't anything new. We know about yeah. we know about the market. So, but again, it is calming down, though, isn't it? Like I think it already calmed down, and now it's creeping up again. Oh, you think it's creeping up again? Yeah, I think this summer, I think it's creeping up again. Yeah, I mean, you do have strange clubs like Arsenal spending fifty million on like a Ben White um, that kind of do bring it back. I mean, Ben White, his value surely can't be more than thirty-five million. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's a good player, good age, but but look, to be fair to Arsenal, yes, that it's a lot of money for Ben White, but they made they overpaid to make sure they got him. Maybe there are other clubs in for him, so yeah. maybe that's why they went for it. I do think Ben White's a good player. I'm, I rate Ben White actually. Yeah, me too. So I'm I'm I think it's a good signing for Arsenal. Uh, I don't I don't think it's a signing that's going to propel them into you know top four challenges or something like that. I don't think I think maybe in the future, but I think uh, to be fair. They made sure they got their man, and you know Spurs have got to start thinking like that sometimes if they want to make sure that they get the players that they that they really want. Because it's all well and good, you know, going for cheaper options, but you know, you, you don't, why can we never get our first choice? We'll never ever. It's always we always have to settle for someone who we didn't really want in the first place every mm. time. Every time, every time. And it's so frustrating, isn't it? It's just so frustrating because it's like I'm gonna. I keep repeating myself, but it's literally the same story over and over again. Every transfer window is Spurs. Every transfer window, and it's just so frustrating. It's either the same, or we're going for bargain bucket, uh, bargain basement players. At the end of the day, that's that's one of the two. Um, and when are we just going to pull the boat out and act like the club that? Um, 
that we think we are with the kind of stadium and the, all the facilities that we have. You know, when are we going to start acting like that club? It's gonna be, I don't know. Are we ever? Are we ever? Exactly. Yeah. Like that's what Poch was saying. You know, we we've got all these tra- facilities now. Now let's let's start acting like I'll, a big club. Was, we I'll, still haven't started. I was doing saying this it. yesterday to Josh. There, everyone talks about the quote from Pochettino when he speaks about the fur- nice house, these nice furniture. But everyone, no, no one ever talks about the quote when he says. Um, I remember this quote very cl- clearly. He said. Um, in the transfer market, you can't always think you're going to be the smartest team in the league. He said, "You I can't." Remember this quote. Yeah, I remember this. He said, "You can't when, when when you need to sign a player, you can't always think that you're going to be the smart." smart. I think it was that summer we didn't sign anyone. He said, "You can't always think you're going to be so clever, not sign anyone, and then just improve. You have to keep refreshing. You have to keep reinvesting in your squad. Otherwise, it it can go a bit stale." And I, I remember just thinking, he said, "You can't always think you're you're going to be the smartest t- uh, team." So I think that's what I think Levy all. Th- that's what he thinks. I think a lot of the time he thinks we're always going to be a step ahead or something, always going to be smarter by not investing and not playing the games other teams are playing. But sometimes you need to, uh, you need to do that to progress. Otherwise, you, you're going to think that you're being smart, but actually you're being stupid by not, by not, by not getting the player that you should be and getting. I'm, and I'm guessing that quote probably came just after the Jack Grealish deal uh, fell through. Yeah, I can, um, let me try and find it because I want to try and remember. Uh, it must have exactly. been the Jack Grealish because it was that summer that we were that we were going to sign Jack Grealish, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure it was that summer. Uh, but we got another super chat while you're looking for that. This is from Tom the Goose saying that the way this club is going, I'm really struggling to feel motivated for the new season. I love you guys. Keep up. Oh, I just lost it. Keep up the good work. Players much what must watch must match ground. <sighs> it's just so so depressing. Like all this news always coming. Like look, I've been feeling so um, positive for the new season, but then when I looked at the face of things, like we just haven't improved. We've actually regressed from last season. If the season was going to start tomorrow. We're a worse team as we were last season. So it's actually hard to get excited. It really is. Yes, we've got a new manager trying to play all good football. Yeah, we've got players looking sharp in friendlies like Bergvine and Lucas and Delhi and Son and, and Skip and all these players. But ultimately, we're weaker. We're weaker than we were last season. We've yeah, sold, as of now, we are. We've sold Toby. We've sold Lamella. Yes, we've brought in a Brian Hill and a Golini. Golini's going to be a backup keeper. Brian Hill's going to be... You know, he's going to take time to bed into this team. He's a Spanish, he's a young kid coming over from Spain. Yes, he's got a high ceiling and high prospects, but I don't think we're going to be seeing that straight away. So you've got to say, pretty much we've signed two players for the future and sold two players that we use now. Yeah, I completely agree. And um, as much as we there was a bit of excitement uh, going into this week and, uh, and last week about what was happening, rumours of players coming in, you know, Nothing's actually happened yet to get us that excited going to the new season. Yes, we got a new manager, Nuno, which I like. We got a month too late, which has been holding us back in terms of planning. Um, I, but I still like him. I still think he could be. He could. He could improve us, Nuno. Um, yes, we've got a, a goalkeeper, and Brian Hill is um, a player who could be good for the future and could be a, could be a good could make an instant impact uh, in in one way or another. But we have to. We have to temper our expectations at the moment in terms of what we're expecting to happen next season because right as, as of right now, the squad that we have is not stronger than it was last season. So how can we expect to improve? Exactly. Exactly. Um, there's a tweet here um, from Tottenham Tears. Maybe you should get it up. Yeah. One um, if the phone is the phone added. Yeah. yeah it is. Go Tottenham. to Tottenham And it's just absolutely spot on, their latest tweet. So it's that missing out on Milan screening our Ruben Diaz, who much like Christian Romero wanted to join Tottenham Hotspur, should show the club how not paying the fee could be a massive mistake. Stop making the same mistake, Tottenham. Every single time. Every time. And and it's like, look at look at those defenders that we could have had. Milan Skriniar, who was one of the top centre-backs in Serie A after not signing. Ruben Diaz, who completely transformed, revolutionised Man City's defence last year. And now are we going to miss out on the third one, who was actually Serie A defender of the year last year? 
And here's the quote. I, I think it's a bit okay. It's a bit different to what how I remember it. Maybe I'm thinking of a different quote. But he says, um, he says, I saw stat. This was in January 2019. So this January 2019 is the January of the season we got to the Champions League final. So we hadn't signed anyone that summer. Okay. The summer beforehand. Okay. He says, I saw a stat the other day about how teams were spending money in the last ten years, and we were bottom in England and in Europe. We're doing a fantastic job, but if we want to be real contenders, we need to operate in a different way in the future. At the moment, it's fantastic so far, so good. But we'll see if it's enough to challenge and be consistent in the next five years. Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, to be consistent in the next five years operating in that way. If we, oh my God. <coughs> Clear that throat, boy. He says, if we're capable to fight with the big sides in the same way that we fought in in the in the in the last four or five years. So he's clearly selling uh, every clearly saying in that quote, look, it's all well and good we can do it for for the for this amount of time, but what about the next five years? What about the future? We can't keep operating in this way if we actually yeah. want to be serious. Yeah. And he, this was before that quote we talked about, about nice house, uh, nice house, nice furniture kind of stuff. So he, Pochino was consistently saying this throughout his tenure. And it's just, we're, not, we're never going to learn the lessons, are Poch, we? Poch knew exactly the score. He knew the score. He knew exactly uh, what was going to happen with this squad. He knew exactly. <clears throat> Down to a T, you know what I mean. He kept warning Levy. He kept warning. He put. He kept putting those warning signs out there. And I'm sure behind the scenes he was telling him face to face as well, uh, more in depth, uh, what's going to be happening to this football club. But the, Daniel Levy didn't want to listen. He wanted to sack him instead. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, now we are where we are. Exactly. And now we are where we are. Uh, let's get. We got a guest uh, in the back end, I believe. Wakaz. Let's bring him Wackers. on. Wakaz. How you doing, Wakas? Hey How are you? Hey, good to have you on, mate. I'm good, I'm good. What do you want to speak you about guys? today, my friend? Hello, can you hear us? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can. So uh, are no. you excited? Tell, tell me, Wakas, are you excited for this new season coming in? How are you? What are you expecting from the season ahead? So, um, what do I think, like, we should expect, like, top, 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 top four, to, to be all, 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 all honest, I think it's not, not going to ha happen. We're okay. going to be lucky to, to get more, more, more than fifth place. I think that we haven't gotten the squad that's capable of, of like, achieving stuff um uh, as as you could see with liverpool united and city and all the other top six clubs they kept signing all these players and um and we're just sleeping and it's like and if we don't like wake up then um yeah we're we just going to fall further and further behind, won't we, Wackers? We'll just keep falling further and further behind until we uh, get the players in that we want. But have you uh, been watching the pre-season yeah. games so far? Have you been watching the pre-season games? Yeah, I have. Tell me, who has uh, impressed you uh, most so yeah, far? I have. Who's impressed you most so far in the in the games? To me. To be honest, I think um, I think Scarlett Kip um, or also past Kotsi, past Doxy, yeah, yeah. I think he's been really impressive. Um, I think Bergvine, he was decent um, yeah, 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 yesterday. Lou, 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 Lucas was one man of the match for me and um, I think that um, it's impre We were impressive, but um, yeah, now 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 it needs to start when we're gonna be serious. Mm. Okay. And is Harry Kane gonna stay? Do you think Wakaz? Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't. One hundred percent. I don't think Lee 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 will even budge with that one. Wow. Are you wearing a? Uh
right, we're back, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, but big up to our man, Wakaz, uh, <laughs> with that absolutely um, fire. He was spitting fire. Everyone's showing him some big love in the comments. 100% Kane is Exactly. Saying, you heard yeah. it here first. Tier 1 source, <laughs> Wakaz. Um, we, we we still want to know if you're uh, wearing that new shirt though, so please put We're it in the uh, We're taking money put it in the comments. Put it in the comments uh, if you are wearing the new shirt. And Ariane <laughs> Ari R says we need more Wackaz comments. Joe McGuinness saying we want more Wackaz. Um, so they're calling your name Wackaz. They want you. They want you back on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant stuff. Yeah, shame we got cut off there. Our computer did um, app just crash on us uh, randomly. So apologies about that. We are back. Um, what, what? Yeah, uh, but we've kind of been through all the news so far. So if you do want to come and have your say, uh, we'll wait for a couple of minute, more minutes to get some people on. Uh, but there's not really that much uh, more news to go through. Mm, pretty much spoken about everything. Um, hopefully we get more updates later on today about things in a more positive light. Um, at the moment, uh, Romero deal seems to be on the rocks. Hopefully we can... Uh, um, improve that and hopefully Spurs can stump up the cash but at the moment it's not looking good for the Romero deal um no it's what's his tweet it? we've got a tweet here from Aaron he says where is it let's be honest uh, as we are not in the Europa League or the Champions League it's hard to attract players Romero would be one of the only world class players willing to join us you're not going to find much of them um, and, and that's true. Um, it did not come up. Um, I think that's absolutely true. And that's like also the case with like Conte. It's like we're not going to be able to get uh, like that many world class managers. So there's one willing to join. You just got to snap them up. But Spurs at the moment, it's like we're holding ourselves back. It's not even it's not even the case of players not wanting to join. It's like we're actively like hurting ourselves by not making sure we get these people in. And in terms of Conte. He's literally, you got to say, probably what, the best manager in Europe right now um, on, on, yeah, current, well, least, on yeah. current accolades and whatever. Um, and he was willing to come. You know, he was willing to come. He told Levy the, the, map, the roadmap to success, how to get success. And Levy was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to do it my way. Pretty much. Going to go cheaper. We're going to go... Uh, no, I'm going to do it my way. way. That, the, the way that's shown so much success in the past 20 years. Yep. And that's the situation with Tottenham at the moment, unfortunately. Um, it's difficult to comprehend, but that is, that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> Wack has, uh, Wack has re responded in the comments, and he says he is wearing the new shirt. Uh, so big uh, everyone collect your money who bet on the new shirt. Well done. <laughs> well done. Smashed it out there. Well done, Wack has. But I think if there is no one else waiting, I think that will be it for today. Uh, we'll come back with another Tottenham update that will be live on the channel um, at some point this afternoon. But thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. Uh, that is your good morning, Tottenham. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on, you Spurs. Spurs.